The standby flight instruments are on the center instrument panel to the left of the upper display unit. They include a standby horizon indicator, a standby altimeter airspeed indicator, and a standby radio magnetic indicator, or RMI. A standby magnetic compass is on the center post above the light shield. The standby flight instruments are electromechanical or pneumatic. They are an emergency source of flight information if the primary instruments fail. The standby horizon indicator is the emergency source of attitude information. The battery bus powers the indicator. After the loss of all normal AC power, the indicator continues to operate as long as battery power is available. The caging control aligns the horizon with the airplane symbol. Pull and hold the control until the horizon is aligned. Approach information is also available. The approach selector controls the information displayed. Turn the selector to approach to display ILS information. Localizer and glide slope information is available if the number one navigation receiver is tuned to an ILS frequency. Now turn the selector to back course to display back course information. When you select back course, the localizer deviation bar reverses polarity for the approach display. The glide slope deviation bar is removed. Now let's discuss failure indications. We'll return to approach mode in order to see all indications. The gyro failure flag is displayed anytime the attitude indication is unreliable. When the approach selector is in approach or back course, the localizer flag is displayed if the localizer receiver fails. The localizer deviation bar is not shown. When the approach selector is in approach, the glide slope flag is displayed if the glide slope receiver fails. The glide slope deviation bar is not shown. The glide slope and localizer deviation bars are not displayed if the ILS information is unreliable. Standby altitude and airspeed are shown on a single pneumatic indicator. The standby altimeter receives static pressure from the alternate static ports. The standby airspeed indicator receives ram pressure from the auxiliary pitot probe and static pressure from the alternate static ports. The barometric setting control sets the barometric reference. Now turn the barometric setting control to set 1017 millibars or 3014 inches of mercury. The standby altimeter airspeed indicator has no failure flags. You must compare the indications to other instruments to detect a failure. The standby RMI shows magnetic heading and VOR ADF bearing to the station. The AC standby bus powers the RMI. After the loss of all normal AC power, the RMI continues to operate if battery power is available. The two pointers show VOR or ADF bearing. 
You use the VOR ADF bearing switches to select the VOR or ADF display. Turn the number one bearing switch to ADF. The number one pointer now shows the ADF bearing to the station tuned on the number one ADF receiver. The number two pointer continues to show the VOR bearing to the station tuned on the number two VOR receiver. The heading warning flag comes into view if the compass signal from the air data inertial reference system is lost. A bearing pointer warning flag comes into view if electrical power is lost or if VOR has been selected, the navigation signal is lost. The standby magnetic compass is a standard liquid-filled indicator. A deviation card with heading correction factors is located near the compass. The clocks are on the captain's and first officer's instrument panels. The clock is digital with an LCD sweep second hand. Use the time date push button to select manual time or date. Pushing the time date push button will cycle through four modes in the following order. Universal Time Coordinated, UTC Time, UTC Date, Manual Time, and Manual Date. Now let's set the time to 4.08. First, push the Time Date Push button to Manual. When you see manual time, then you can set the time. Selecting the set push button causes the hours to flash. Use the plus or minus push button to adjust the hours. Selecting the set push button again causes the minutes to flash. Use the plus or minus push button to adjust the minutes. Select the set push button again to run the time. The time date control cycles through the time date display from UTC time and date to manual time and date. Push the date control. The day and month are alternately displayed with the year. The date displayed is 26 February 1999. When the date is shown in the time date display, select the set push button and the day flashes. Then use the plus and minus push buttons to adjust the day. Select the set push button again and the month flashes.
Use the plus and minus push buttons to adjust the month. Select the set button again and the year flashes. Use the plus and minus push buttons to adjust the year. Select the set button again to run the date. The elapsed time control operates the elapsed time display. The display shows minutes and hours. The chronograph control operates the chronograph display and the second hand. The display shows only minutes. The elapsed time chronograph display shows elapsed time after the chronograph is reset to zero. The elapsed time function operates only when the elapsed time control is in the run position. Selecting ET push button again temporarily stops the elapsed time until ET is reselected. The reset position sets the elapsed time to zero. Now push the chronograph control to set the second hand and the chronograph to zero. Elapsed time display shows the elapsed time function started 15 minutes ago. Select ET push button to hold. Select the reset push button to reset the elapsed time. The display blanks after 5 seconds. Select the ET push button to start the elapsed time. After one minute has elapsed, a 1 displays. Use the chronograph when you need more accurate timing, such as during non-precision approaches. Push the chronograph control to start the second hand. The second hand shows seconds. Push the chronograph control to stop the chronograph. Push the control again to set the second hand to zero and display the elapsed time. The elapsed time continues to operate in the background while the chronograph operates. The test switch for the flight recorder is on the aft overhead panel. The flight recorder has a two position switch. The switch is guarded to normal. The amber off light illuminates if the flight recorder is not powered or is not operating correctly. AC power is required for the flight recorder to operate. On the ground, if the switch is in the normal position and electrical power is available, the flight recorder automatically operates when either engine is started. In flight, the flight recorder operates when either one of the engine generators or the APU generator is supplying electrical power. Now, let's perform the system test normally completed during pre-flight. Lift the guard. Move the switch to test. The test is satisfactory if the off-light extinguishes. Close the guard to return the switch to normal.
The amber off light illuminates. The test is complete.